Hey, this is Dr. Tori with RookieDoctor.com. Whenever you have to give a presentation, whether it's a morning report, a grand rounds, or something like that, it's important to have a backup. Backup plan for uh, you know how you're going to give that presentation and for the data or anything you're about to present. So let's go over six layers of that backup. Now, of course, there are different types of formats that you could be giving a talk in. Uh, you know, the most obvious and most common is PowerPoint or Keynote if you're using a Mac, and um, you know, so that's that's probably the main one. Not all of the residency programs use PowerPoint when they're giving morning report and things like that, of course. But certainly, if it's ever a grand rounds, sometimes if it's a morbidity mortality conference, and in some places the uh, the morning reports are in PowerPoint. Other things, dry erase board. Okay, um, even though the technology is advancing rapidly, uh, we still love our dry erase boards, and sometimes uh, that's a good way of presenting. Um, chalkboard, I don't know if any of you have any of that, but uh, from a PDF, it's also possible to give a talk, uh, and from the handouts directly, or just from memory. Okay, so there's several ways of giving a talk, uh, and it's important, uh, especially if you're going to be using handouts or PDFs, or you're doing something from memory or from PowerPoint, that you have all of this stuff, that you have some sort of backup source of information in case you lost your uh, data or didn't br happen to not bring that folder that had the handouts in it or whatever. You don't want to show up for a presentation without having the information available to you. So um, let's go over the six forms of data storage that uh, I think are pretty, pretty much the most common and, and at the end I'll give you my favorite. Uh, one is uh, to have a paper copy with you so that uh, let's say you were working on a PowerPoint presentation and you printed out copies of the slides. Okay, that's that's one way. Uh, or if you had notes or something and you had those copied, that way, uh, you know, worst comes to worst, you can't get the computer to work, the laptop's not firing up, or it doesn't connect to the, uh, you know, the projector. Well, you have a paper copy. You can hand it out and go from there. Another way of backing it up is to have a USB or thumb drive, uh, where basically you have your presentation stored on the thumb drive, plug it into the USB port, and uh, you know move it over to whichever laptop or computer is being used to connect to the, pre to the uh, projector. That, that's one way. Um, you know, even there, sometimes you run into trouble because of, uh, you know, it's an older version of the, the software or the thumb drive just doesn't pick it up or somehow you didn't move it over, etc. So uh, it's important to have other forms of backup as well. So you could burn something to a CD, although CDs are uh, sort of falling by the wayside, but it's still possible to have your files backed up on a CD. Um, you could also email yourself the attachment, uh, the presentation as an attachment. Uh, that's always a possibility. I've done that several times. I've actually even FTP'd, uh, for those of you that know what that is, to my own website so that I could pull it, download it later. Um, you could actually bring your actual laptop and try to connect that directly to the projector if it is a, a projection type thing or even if you're presenting from a PDF you could actually just turn your laptop around and start presenting I've done that in small groups and then my favorite one which I'm gonna show you is <clears throat> a thing called well first of all let me tell you it's free it's uh, it can be accessed from any internet connection so that's the one the one drawback is that you re it requires an internet connection the one plus side is that almost everywhere you go there's an internet connection so uh, you should be able to access it from anywhere you go it's compatible with Mac and with PC and if you use the other stuff uh, files that, that they don't live in separate locations so here's what happens and you send an email let's say you email an attachment it'll it, the, the actual file will be on your main computer and then you'll attach it to your email and you'll send it and it then sort of lives in your email thing and then let's say you download it to another laptop well what if you change the version well so right there there's three different versions uh, well not three different versions but three different places that it would have to be changed one is your main computer the other is the email and then the other is wherever you've downloaded it to those are three separate places that your your thing lives and now if that happens if it happens that you've changed things a few times you could actually end up with a very confusing situation where you're trying to find the original one so um, or the, the most recent one the best one uh, and, and you end up uploading or, or using rather 
uh, one that uh, that's not uh, the most up-to-date version. So uh, in this case, with my favorite, not only is it free, not only is it can be accessed from anywhere, and whether you have a Mac or a PC, but the file only lives in one place. Okay. So if you go to rookiedoctor.com/dropbox, rookiedoctor.com/dropbox, dropbox.com is a, is the service I'm talking about. The service that is my favorite. You basically move stuff to a file just like you would on any computer and it will be uh, in your online uh, protected file area and you can pull it from uh, from anywhere so um, and the reason I have it at rookiedoctor.com slash Dropbox is because if you use that link I will get an extra 250 megabytes of storage and so will you if you sign up now again this is free up to a certain number of gigabytes but if you if I if you use my referral link I will get 250 megabytes of extra storage and so will you when you sign up okay so um, if you if you're not interested in hooking me up with an extra 250 megabytes and yourself up with 250 megabytes extra then just go directly to dropbox.com but if you want an extra 250 go to rookiedoctor.com slash dropbox and try it so let's move and uh, I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the inside here we are inside my Dropbox, um, what do you call it, account. Uh, so if I wanted to um, upload new Rookie Doc videos, I could just click upload and um, and send it right to a new to this folder. And the next time I log in, either from my phone or from a work computer or whatever, uh, I just go into my Dropbox account, and there it is. It's living in there. And so. Um, you can basically use it just like you would uh, any other file system. So you could have, you know, 10, to 15, 20, 30 files, who cares how many. You could have all these different files for all these different documents that you want. Um, and they're documents of all types. They don't have to be uh, videos or, or PowerPoint presentations or whatever. They can be all kinds of things. And not only that, you can share it with people. So you can assign people the ability to view it or something. So if, you, if you're working on a presentation with someone else, you can actually have a single place where that thing lives and you guys can share that folder and uh, you know upload to it, download from it, etc. Okay, so um, there's lots of awesome tutorials in here on all the, the power of Dropbox, but it's very easy. Uh, it, it's easy to have it on any computer, any laptop, um, and your phones. So uh, I suggest you try Dropbox. You can go to dropbox.com or rookiedoctor.com slash Dropbox. So that's it. So anyway, go go ahead, go to rookiedoctor.com slash Dropbox if you want to try Dropbox, uh, and go to askrookiedoc.com if you want to ask a question.